us to join him for his live stream as he heads to our Wild China Beijing office. Um, so our Wild China's 73rd event, uh, virtual event since uh, last year when we started. So super exciting. Um, it's our first event in our new series called On the Ground, which is a virtual series where we try to bring sort of live travel elements to you guys, um, wherever you happen to be. So we're really excited to have Wendy Perrin with us today, and um, I hope all of you can join her now next week. I know May and I will be joining, um, and I just want to have May and Wendy say hi quick before we hand over to Fred. So do you guys want to say hello? I will go ahead and say hi, everybody. It's so good to see old friends and new friends one year into this thing and it's super exciting and what you're going to see is literally where I used to bike by every single day when I was in Beijing that's more than a year ago so it's making me very homesick um, I'm glad everybody get to see what home is like and I'm delighted to have Wendy with us Wendy Perra many of you know needs no introduction she uh, ran um, a very special Wendy Parents list for the Condé Nast Travelers for many, many years. And now uh, I'm honored to be on her list, Wendy Perrin's list of WOW um, travel experts around the world. <laughs> so I'll let Wendy say more. <laughs> no, that was very well said, May. And thank you so much for having me. And thank you on behalf of a locked down America for like allowing us to travel virtually for an entire year now. It's meant a lot to all of us. Um, and, uh, and yeah, just to say about WOW Week, it start, it's next week. It's uh, starting May 3rd. Uh, if you go to wendyperrin.com, you'll be able to read all about it. It's basically, you know, answering everyone. So many, as the world starts to open up again, so many people are confused by all of the rules and risk levels. Everyone has so many questions about where can they travel, you know, when they start again, what's open, how to do it smartly, when's the best timing, and we're going to be answering all those questions for people. Yeah, it's consumer facing next week, wendyparing.com, join us. Um, yeah, okay, now we're all totally in your hands, Kendra and um, our wonderful Fred in Beijing. Awesome, all right, Fred, we'll hand it over to you. All right, all right. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Fred, while well, you know is my English name. And I'm a, a tour guide from Wild wow China. So first of all, on behalf of Wild wow China and Wendy Perrin, I want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, some of you, it might be our new friends that we're meeting each other for the first time online today. And I don't know if there's some old friends that you know we have come across before. Um, before before I you know talk about this cashless day in Beijing and how convenient it means to all of our Beijing citizens. I just want to answer uh, one of the pre previous questions um, about where to go once the COVID-19 totally ends. Come to Beijing, come to China. You know what? Come to China. We try our best to uh, preserve the Great Wall, you know, to make it, I mean, still the hair for, just for you. The Forbidden City, Terracotta Warriors, they're so very excited, you know, waiting in, the, in, that, in that pit number one. You know, line up uh, with their weapons in the uh, in their hands and waiting for you guys. Um, please, please come. I think uh, you know we we've been waiting for a long time, and traveling is the soul of our life. Uh, I'm sorry to make May homesick by standing where I am and showing all the environment behind me. I know that you know May used to live here for many years, and so do I. But just the opposite, May. You know what? I'm not really homesick. I just can't wait to get out of this place and start traveling. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Okay, so talking about traveling, uh, I just want to show you one thing. Um, if we, our, our beautiful colleague can maybe spin the camera around and see this Liangmachiao subway station. This is one of the Line 10 subway stations. It was completed by the year of 2008 before the Beijing Olympic Games. And it travels like circle in a circle around the third ring, which is the busiest um, public transportation. Um, that's where most of the traffic you will find during the rush hour. So if you don't want to be stuck in the traffic for two hours, you don't want to park your car on that highway, you go take the subway. So I think in the year of 2019, the maximum volume 
uh, of the subway station, we have up to 13 uh, million, uh, sorry, it's, it's uh, 1.3 billion people, you know, about taking subway. That's the maximum for like a daily base. And you can see people still, uh, you know, continuously, uh, they come out through the subway station. They're trying to work to their uh, yeah, workplace, their, their, their company, um, their destination. And once they get out of the subway station, um, you can see there are some bikes parking on the roadside. We're going we're gonna to touch, um, touch on that a little more specifically and tell you about, you know, the shared bike system in Beijing and how many different kinds we have. But before that, you know what? Um, what time is it in the States right now? Uh, maybe it's late, late at night in the evening, right? And it is still early in the morning. And sorry, guys, I kind of got up very early this morning and I'm starving right now. So let's start our cashless day in Beijing from buying a local breakfast. We're talking about eating scorpions and stuff. No, just kidding. All right. Uh, why don't you follow me? Oh, wow. Let's take a look at this. This is very tempting. So this is what we call the Chitan Guan Bing. So she's actually uh, making that little pancake um, by using the flour dough. Uh, it's actually uh, uh, with egg on top of that. So this is Guan Bing, and this is what we eat almost every day. All right. So you can see that there are a lot of different beverage, you know, soft drinks behind her. So you can just go a la carte and pick whatever you need for, uh, you know, to make a a, a beautiful breakfast. So I'm going to start easy. All right. Uh, you know, you need to go to the next one. You got to go to the next one. You got to go to the next one. You got to go to the cost me six yuan for that, buying that pancake. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to unlock my cell phone. All right. This is private. <laughs> okay. So this is my WeChat. And... I just need to click on that. And here is, I'm sorry, it's all in Chinese, but here it says scan. So if I click on that and you can see that they have the, like the postal at China Post, like payment platform registered and they have the WeChat. Um, this is WeChat. Uh, we should. Uh, so I'm going to scan that code. And here it comes. So she told me six yuan. So I just punch in six and pay. And sorry, my pin code. We're going to steal that code. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Look at that. So it's paid. And there is a um, like audio, um, audio reminder. Uh, you know, inside is like through the PA system out loud so they know somebody has already paid for this. Hey, can, can we swing the camera and let everybody see the gem bean? Oh, this is it. Oh, okay. Hey, Fred, so we're, we're, we're yeah. Asking, what's the difference between jidan guan bing and jian bing guaze? Oh, that's a very good question. You know, I'm the expert on this. <laughs> no, no, not really. So jian bing, jian bing, I think it's uh, it's very popular throughout the country, especially in Beijing. But I think the best jian bing um, originates from Tianjin area, so which is like a coastal city southeast of Beijing. So what they do with jian bing? Ah, huh? Sorry, she asked me if I want spice on it. And I kind of have a sensitive tummy, so no, no, no spice. Some pickles, potatoes. So um, our, our cameraman is shooting that little guan bing. It's like a miniature version of jian bing. So we're using the same technique. But, but actually, jian bing is a lot thinner than this. It's just one very thin layer of you know, flour dough. Um, it, it's not even flour dough. What, what do you call it? It's like flour batter. Batter. On that, uh, yeah, batter on that stove, on that stove. So this is the guan bing. Guan bing actually, you can see, it's, uh, wow, take a look at it. Uh, I hate to eat this in front of you guys. Um, Cause I'm afraid, you know, I'm a healthy person. I don't eat meat, not snack. I don't want you guys to get into this habit because of me eating this. So there is lettuce, 
and there is some sauce and pickle inside. It smells really good. But um, I'm going to take a bite and I'm going to hand it over to our beautiful cameraman. I know that he hasn't had his breakfast either. Okay. Ooh. I think the only thing that might be better than this is picking duck. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. This just makes me cry. Mm. But hey, uh, guys. The reason why we're here today is not is not to watch me eat, right? So, I'm done. This is really good. Um, while we're taking a, a leisure walk towards the um, like a local market, and as you can see, that this is a very true like life scenario of Beijing rush hour. People, you know, they're they're like walking fast speed because I think it's almost uh, now now it's the start time of the you know work hours so anybody who still uh, appears on the street that means they might be late for work okay so I guess that's why people are walking very fast and we have 20 million people in Beijing yeah I was born and raised in Beijing so call me a Beijinger um, and the city is very different from what I remember what you know what it used to be there used to be a lot more bikes. There are just zillions of bikes on the street. But right now, what we can see is only like those shared bikes parking on the roadside. Uh, but instead, we have all the cars, you know, public buses, um, very busy traffic. And also, I don't remember seeing all those skyscrapers, you know, those condominiums. They're like all over the city. And that makes the city almost impossible to live because it's extremely expensive. For some of my friends, they were born in Beijing, but not necessarily means that they still be living in Beijing because they, they cannot afford to live in Beijing. Um, we're talking, oh, let's take this area for example. I think the real estate price uh, about, the average price um, in this area is about 70,000 yuan, 70,000 yuan per square meter, which is 7,000 yuan per square foot. Um, which is about 1,000 US dollar per square foot. How does that sound to you? If we talk about the like monthly wage, monthly income of a local citizen, and you will have the idea of how ridiculously high the real estate now is, what it means to a, like a normal, like a common citizen. Um, there is a joke about a, a, a people, a, a, like a citizen like me, I have to work for like maybe 35 to 40 years like nonstop, no more new clothes, no more new toys, no Nintendo Switch, no nothing, no entertainment, watching movie that's um, strictly prohibited. <clears throat> if I save every single penny I make from work, so after 30 years, well, based on our average income, uh, monthly income, according to the city's uh, statistics, so I'd be able to buy the bathroom of a new condo. This is how expensive, you know, the apartment um, is in Beijing. Um, but, you know, still, I think over 60, 65 or 70 percent of the uh, graduate students from college, their dream is to stay in Beijing. And that's why every year there are just so many people from outside of Beijing, other provinces. Um, they, 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 want to, they want to pass the uh, college entrance examination with scores that, they, I mean, they have to get uh, maybe a hundred more points than the Beijing students in order to attend Beijing schools. It's because after graduation, they have a bigger chance to stay in Beijing. And after staying in Beijing, they might be a programmer, they might be a you know, bank clerk, they might be whatever jobs they'd be able, able to find after school graduation. But if they manage to pay five years of taxation in a row, and and if they manage to, uh, if, if they fulfill like all the requirements on a migrant sheet, they be able to register a Beijing hukou. This is a very interesting system we have. Like my daughter, she, she's born, she was born in Beijing. So she was born as a Beijinger. Um, so what is the advantage of being a Beijinger? I mean, if you uh, live here for a certain amount of time, 
you understand that our healthcare system, our social welfare system, that is not the same like all over the country because we have first tier, second tier, third tier cities and Beijing, everything that, that is assigned to Beijing is the best because we're the capital. Well, it just makes me feel so good by saying we are the capital. Beijing is the capital. Okay. So, and that's why there's so many people that want to stay in Beijing. If they, if, if they're from outside of Beijing, other provinces, well, at least if they can root in Beijing, so their kid will have the Beijing Hukou, the registration since the day they were born. All right. And that's why, you know, Beijing is the place where you realize your uh, China dream. Right. Um, and take a look around. And right now, I don't even have, I mean, I have a very big backpack and there's laptop in my backpack, but there's no wallet. I don't need to carry my wallet. I don't need to carry credit cards um, or any sort of a, you know, payment. All I need to have is a cell phone. Well, you gotta make sure the cell phone is always, I mean, the battery is, is good. Otherwise it will be very difficult for you to survive, to live your day in Beijing. Okay, and talking about this mobile wallet, this online payment, I think it all started, it all started from 2004, from a long time ago when uh, Jack Ma, Ma Yun, you know, established this online you know, payment system and he's the founder of Alibaba. And right now there are two main players in this mobile wallet business, the market, which is Alibaba versus WeChat. WeChat is a system that I think most of the citizens we use from time to time. And, but Alibaba, well, the, I think one thing in common, the founders of both WeChat and Alibaba, they're all Mr. Ma, right? Ma Hua Teng and Ma Yun. So there gotta be some stories for why, you know, why Mr. Ma is so good. <laughs> um, but WeChat is a new player. I think in the year of 2014, the night before the Chinese New Year, when everybody was spending like a peaceful time with the family members, um, you know, watching TV show. And all of a sudden they realized that on their WeChat, which was more like a Facebook, like social communication um, platform at that time, you know, people just simply talk to each other through WeChat, on WeChat. But they realized that, hey, there seems to be a new function added to WeChat, which is sending Hongbao online. Okay, just a little more education on this. You guys might, might never heard of Hongbao. Hongbao is literally translated as the red envelope. So what's inside the red envelope? Cash, pure cash. I, I don't know why Chinese, we, we love to send cash, to give cash to each other on Chinese New Year. I mean, even after Chinese New Year celebration, when you greet each other, when you see each other, you say Gong Xi Fa Tai, more in the South, in South China where, you know, Cantonese area, um, which means I wish you rich. I wish you to be rich. Uh, I guess we're a very business oriented nation, <laughs> but like giving Hongbao from grandparents or parents to kids, their grandkids, it's a tradition that has been lasting for like centuries. So from the year 2014, people realized that they don't, they don't have to put those dirty paper note into that envelope. They can click one button on their cell phone and just send it electronically, you know, on through the WeChat platform. I think this is a battle signal from WeChat, um, you know, sent to uh, Alipay. So ever since that day, Ever since that day, this, this, this fight on the Chinese New Year's Eve has become dramatic. I think the only few days after, you know, the Hongbao system came out and Alibaba was irritated and they were like, hey, what about this new player? Are you trying to challenge my market? So within 20 days, they've just come up with some other system that encouraged people. I think they, they managed to gather an audience of 20 million people using their Hongbao system. So they're officially taking that challenge. So ever since the last, the next year, 2015 and 2016, and you name it, 
all the days to now. I mean, they've been fighting on this Hongbao market. And you have no idea how many Hongbaos are actually sent through Ali and WeChat. I think for one year, there is about 8 billion like Chinese yuan sent within a minute. Sorry, a clicking, the time of click. Um, so that, that you see how intensively the battle starts. And well, as it comes to our life nowadays, and personally, I, both, I use both Alipay and WeChat because Alipay, they have, I think, a very smart credit system called the Sesame credit system. And I think it's very scientific. So if you manage to pay all your credit cards and all your uh, you know, mortgage and stuff in, in time, and they will gradually, and also by using their credit card, by using Ali payment to purchase very constantly online, they will just increase your uh, points. And as soon as you get enough points, you don't even have to pay down payment for anything you buy. Hey, where are you headed, Fred? I'm heading to a market, the local Marsanyali market. Oh, uh, nice. I think, we're, I, I think we're here. There's a, there's a question here I just yeah. saw. How long have motorbikes been in Beijing? Uh, oh. This is Lin. Lin said I was there in 2008. Oh. Uh, there weren't any. I, th I think, Lin, you meant like those um, Mobike, right? The digital bikes. Oh, the, the little bikes. bikes. The shared bikes. Oh, the shared yeah. bikes. Yeah, show us one. Uh, Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's get out from this uh, area first because we're in the middle of the garbage station. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, I mean, even in the garbage station, it's so neat and clean. Okay, so our, our, um, my colleague is gonna show you first this, um, this little yellow bike. This is May Tuan bike, but I think this, um, it was previously mobile. It was actually bought by um, um, by Meituan, like a large online um, like e-commerce company. So, and and let's switch a camera to the other side, and you can see a little uh, cyan or a green bike over there. Maybe let's walk a little closer so, so you can see it. Because I'm gonna tell you that there is a difference between all this and how it all started. Okay. Mm. And look at this. This is my favorite hmm. because I don't, I don't even have to download any, uh, any, any other apps or I don't even have to use the, uh, the Meituan, um, you know, payment uh, thing to unlock it. I can, I can directly use my WeChat. I just scan that code and use my WeChat. This is called Xiao Qing, uh, Qing Zhu, the cyan orange or the green orange. Uh, I think before this, it used to be the little blue Xiaolan. And it was actually bought by Didi. So we used to be the competitor against Uber in the Chinese market. Um, okay, but, but you know, before all the market share starts, you know, the fighting for market share starts, I think the first one who actually established, who actually created this shared bike is actually the municipal government. And it, it's absolutely uh, um, complimentary, um, but, Later, as we walk down the street, after spending some time in the market, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you some of the stations. They have those pillars, uh, like a station, uh, like stabilized, like locking area for all the bikes. That's the problem. Although it's free, but you have to return the bikes specifically to that station, wherever you see that station. And it's not everywhere in the city. And that's kind of inconvenient for people to return their bikes. And there used to be, I think, time limit that you can only return bikes after nine o'clock every day, but you cannot like borrow. You cannot get bikes out from that pillar after nine o'clock. So because of a lot of those inconvenience, the commercial market starts. I think originally that was in the year of 2013 in Bay Peking University campus. And there was a student whose name is Dai Wei. And he's very smart. He wanted to uh, help students travel freely in the campus. So what if you want to you know, travel from library to your dormitory, uh, which takes maybe about 20 minutes walk. Uh, why not to get a bike? So that shared bike started from our campus, Peking University. And pretty soon, you know, where there is need, there is market. And where there is market, there will be merchandise. And it, it appears on the Beijing Street for one time, I think from 2016 to 2018, 
there was more like a city, beautiful city uh, a tourist attraction with a rainbow of bikes. So we have little blue, we have little yellow, little orange, little red, little this and that, all different colors. And people love it. I mean, how often do you see rainbows? <laughs> but but uh, right now, I think there are about three like big players left. Um, this is one of those. And the mobile, the little orange bike um, is, is, is one of the three. Uh, while the city government, I mean, the municipal government um, still remain that uh, little red, red bike, but it's not very popular. Later, once we dust, you know, uh, uh, accumulates on top of the bike, bike seat. So that gives you an idea of how many people actually use it. Yeah, uh, it's sad. Okay, so why don't you follow me? We're gonna take you into uh, our local market. Let me tell you a secret. Before we step in there, it might be some you know foreign friends who speak English. Personally, I don't, I don't, I don't go to that market. And for any of you that come to Beijing that decide to live here for over a month or so, if you need to purchase fresh vegetable daily necessities, don't come here because <laughs> it's more expensive. I think it's because of the people live. Within this area, this is the golden real estate belt, the third green road. And people that manage to stay here and buy their home here, they're comparatively very like rich. So that's why it's it's a it's it's a it's it's a pretty expensive market. All right. And they say that because of they got all the organic food from like a certain farm and greenhouse, uh, which is more healthy, but you know how the story goes. Okay, come here and just buy everything online by using WeChat or Alipay. Okay, uh, sorry guys, I may have to do two things. First of all, first of all, I'm, I need to put on my mask. The virus situation is not bad at all. We don't even have, we have zero increased symptoms now. Um, but still for, I think, public awareness, we, just decide to put on the mask because everybody else is doing so. And I need to open my WeChat one more time. Oh. Okay. And so this is our Beijing like public health registration. It's it's a system that tracks your um, whereabouts. It tracks your, uh, you know, itinerary, your, 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 your journal, your journey. So, for example, I returned from Hangzhou to Beijing a few days ago. And this morning, it took me about five minutes to, like, renew my itinerary. So, from the collection of big data, they know where I have been to. And if I've returned to Beijing from a very high-risk area, then I'm, I may have to pass the test. All right? So, I click on this. This is how I scan the QR code. It says nothing abnormal. I'm glad to see that. Okay. It says I'm healthy. All right. So I can enter that place. And also from the backstage, they collect the big data that this guy whose name is Fred has been to the market at a certain time of the day. So what if things go wrong? They will just track all people that are coming to the market at the same time. Hey, Fred, there are all those people walking in without scanning. It's not very strict. It's not fair, too. Man, I, I was following the protocols. What about you guys? Hey, we're on live streaming. Come on, man. Uh, never mind. Uh, okay. All right, let's go, guys. Um, yeah, man, you're, you're right. Uh, I do. I see a lot of people coming in without scanning that code. They shouldn't do that. They don't deserve to have fresh fruit. Uh, but you know, it's such a personal choice. I think, you know, talk a little side story about Chinese. I think we're very nice people. You know, Chinese are generally like subdued and very gentle. And I think we're very family oriented. I mean, I'm 40 years now, I'm 40 years old now. Um, I'm gonna be 41 this year born in the year of monkey, but I'm still very much, you know, connected with my family. I call my family, I call my mom almost like every other day. Otherwise she'll be angry. 
and I have to go to their my my folks' place and for dinner or lunch from time to time. So uh, I think ever since ancient time, like thousands of years ago, if you understand the the core value of Confucianism, it says. Benevolence, uh, intelligence, right, fidelity, uh, and, and trust were, you know, credibility. And all those, I think that the quality on top of all those is filial piety, which is to be nice and take good care of your parents. So that is the very core of the Chinese culture, I think. Uh, but now it, I, I think that as we're developing at this incredible rapid speed, and everybody realized that you don't just take care of your family. You need to raise your, you know, the awareness of people around you. You take care of the community. And that is something that we don't used to think much about. Um, so I think starting from, you know, SARS and for all those pandemics now, and people realize that, yeah, well, those people live in the same city. You know, we could be a bigger family. And so that's why. You don't see that many people like just randomly dump their cigarette butt on the street or spit on the street. And you see people like just stand in line in front of the shopping mall and scan their code one after another, which is, I think is really good. I'm really happy to see this. It's a big change of our, uh, you know, hey. our traditional, sorry, sorry, man, you were saying something? Fred, Right, right. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, thank I, you for I, the said, reminder. I said, show us a couple of things. Otherwise, I'm getting dizzy from your walking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, take a look at this. This is a very fresh, like, morning market with all the uh, vegetable um, from the suburb of Beijing. And I cannot recognize all of them. Well, Jiao I can gua. see. Hey, uh, 哪个是我瓜? Gua. Oh, God. Uh, May you're definitely more professional. Um, I'm, I'm not a, this like one. a veggie person. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, I, I think this is bitter melon, right? This is a kuwa. And that's the cucumber. And that's some, you know, peppers of different colors. And we see some mushroom in the middle. Um, and oh, this is my favorite. I like tomato. Uh, it's very healthy. And we, ha we have broccoli there and peanuts. So uh, yeah, well, local people, uh, they would come to the market and they would just, you know, buy those by using either Ali, Alipay or WeChat Pay. Um, but different from this, as you can see that this is, I, I assume that I can still use my WeChat um, scan for this QR code. So every single stand, no matter what they sell, they have their own QR code posted on this, you know, in front of the shop. So, uh, 不好意思, 不好意思, 我们拍一下那个支付的码, 好的, 好的, 没问题, 没问题. All right, so, so no matter what system you use, Alipay or WeChat, um, and all you have to do is take your camera out, uh, sorry, your, your, your cell phone out, and scan that code, and within the blink of the eye, and you get what you want. Yeah, um, let's, you know, test because I think I might have to get some fresh fruit for my colleagues back in Wild China office. Let's see. Hey, can you ask Charles to yeah show us sort of the whole market? Hey Charles, can you them to show us the whole market? Wow, lobster. Like a seafood section. Ask about the price of the lobster. They must be from Maine. Yeah, on the low side of Maine. Ah, that big one. Ah, two hundred and sixty yuan. Two hundred and sixty yuan. Oh, okay. It's two hundred and sixty yuan for fifty. Uh, sorry, for five hundred grams. How does that sound for you? Two hundred fifty yuan. That's like thirty dollars. No, forty dollars. Forty dollars, yeah. Forty dollars yeah. a pound. Is that expensive? Yes, it's four times the price of Maine. God, see, that's why I want to go to the states <laughs> for better lobster price. And hey, look at this. This is a uh, 
their lamb and you know pork and ribs and you know different parts uh tenderloin how much are the ribs how much are the pork ribs 你好这个这是猪肉吗这这排骨怎么卖啊 it's 55 yuan 500 grams wow that's very pricey that is that is nine dollars a pound almost yeah let's try chicken breast this is what i eat almost uh you know like three four times a week i like chicken breast uh, it's 15 yuan it's about two dollars or more than two dollars per pound is that expensive no that's fine that, that's that's cheap. Oh, ch ch chicken breast but yeah because i i guess it's because we eat a lot of chicken you know like kung pao chicken chicken this chicken that and we love KFC too. So, <laughs> wow! Oh look at this. Arranged, everything's arranged so neatly. I really. <laughs> there's all like there's all like price tag, you know, on top of the uh, you know, the plastic cover, and so you can check the price. I mean, to be honest with you, I think I managed to get cheaper stuff from restaurants. So, but I mean, those look very, very fresh. Those looks great. Fred, is everything always covered in plastic? You know, the produce and the meats, is it always mm. covered in plastic or glass or is that a COVID thing? Uh, no, no, it's not a COVID thing. I think uh, even before COVID, you know, we do this all the time. Uh, it makes the thing, I, I think it, you know, it, it's a better way, better way of preserving, you know, the food inside uh and also especially especially under that light you know it makes it it makes the merchandise look better you know because it's very bright yeah it's not just because of covid okay so i'm gonna buy strawberry 35 35 yuan uh 500 gram so unlock my cell phone and scan you know oh, okay see so there are three different kind of a three different qr codes this is from icbc one of our you know uh, banks and this is wechat and this is alipay so it doesn't matter which platform you're gonna use there's always way to pay 35 35 you for strawberry that's it that's expensive fred yeah she she weighs and she said instead of 35 you pay me 42 because it's a little bit over 500 you know what i'm not i'm very bad at bargaining so yeah yeah i can i hear the happy sound that means that payment is is done huh let me see does she still collect any cash ask her like you know that, you so, so yeah so yeah cash is cash is okay mm -hmm. yeah she also collects cash uh, but i think many i mean there aren't so many people very very uh few people would actually come in and pay cash yeah. Yeah. Very, that's that's what she said uh wechat alipay that's the, you know, most of the time people would just pay by using that. Yeah, no, no more cash. One, one or two individual customer would very occasionally would use cash. Yeah, well, cash is considered like a dinosaur thing. Thank mm. you. <laughs> She, uh, she actually gives Fred's good English is very good. Yeah. When I said so so, not too bad. Just trying to make a living. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to show the modesty of being a Chinese, you know. So here's a there's some questions. How would a visitor or tourist going about getting a mobile pay account um they could use while in China? Or what do they do? Okay. That's a very interesting question. So first of all, I used to deal with it all the time, uh, but I don't know if policy has changed. You have to have a bank card first. 
Yeah, which means that you have to show show up in a bank, like mm -hmm. a real bank, and then to register with your passport. Um, and so you get a bank card and you connect the bank card with your WeChat account. And then you can use the, uh, or with the Alipay accounts, then you'll be able to use that. Uh, May, am I right about this? Do you all have to go through this? Um, I think foreigners used to be able to use a credit card with Alipay. Oh. But I don't oh, know okay. if that's still the case. I know that was the way a couple of years ago. I don't, May, do you uh, know? Okay. I, I'm not updated on this right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Several people have asked if bargaining still exists. Like at the markets, do you still bargain or do you just pay what's on the price tag? It's just that's a very being generous. <laughs> it's, it's being generous or stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, bar, bar, bargaining, you know, that happens all the time, especially in a market like this. But, but not in, not, I, I don't think many bargaining will be structured inside of that market that we just went into. Because, you know, people that, a lot of the people that choose to go to that market, they don't care, you know, bargain down like 10 cents. And I think time to them might be more precious than, you know, this huggly. Um, it's just me. It's, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm very bad, you know, bargainer. So I cannot do this. You sell me a pair of pants. You said 20. I said, how about 25? I bargain up. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife, she... She used to ask me what, which pair of shoes um, you like online. Just pick and click on that. Don't pay. Or if you try to buy something from the market, don't pay. Let me do the bargaining stuff. And I was like, you know, this macho thing comes out. I say, hey, I thought I'm the decision maker. Why, why don't I uh, have the right to get in that? Well, Years later, I realized that saved money. Okay, I'll just do that. Okay, guys. <laughs> uh, take a look at this. So this is uh, what, I, what I told you before. It's set up by the Beijing Municipal Government. And so they have like a stabilized, like a locking system. And this is how they lock the bike. You can either use an IC card, like a public transfer IC card to unlock it. Or you can use... Uh, um, you know, like a, a different like online payment. Uh, but right now, sorry, it's drizzling. Um, the rain just comes from, comes from the middle of nowhere. You know, it just starts so, so suddenly. Um, so you can see that there is a very thick layer of dust on the bike seat, which indicates that, you know, it has not been used for a long time. And now, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of muddy. So people don't like it. Yeah, it's free stuff. But people don't like it because, you know, they want to park wherever they, whenever they can park, wherever they need to park. They need to get bikes like right now. They don't want to go to a, like a nearby bike station, which is about 10 minutes walking distance away. Time is money. So I, I guess that's why if, if you want to create something for free, you know, free of charge for people to use, uh, you might have to put more thoughts in it. You know, otherwise... I, I think nowadays, I mean, Chinese are famous for being um, like a big consumer, right? Um, people, they're willing to pay as long as it worth the price. Mm. Yeah. Those bikes are in so much better shape than the bikes I rented when I was in Beijing 23 oh. years ago. <laughs> God, Wendy, you should have told me that. I'll just go there and decorate the bike by myself. I'll put the <laughs> emperor's flag. And a sedan <laughs> chair on that bike. <laughs> so, Fred, there's a question. Uh, yeah. Do you use credit card frequently? Uh, no, my credit card. I think they. Uh, my credit card was expired a few months ago. They sent me a new card. I don't even activate it because I don't need it. If I need, if if you know, I first of all, I think to spend what I don't have, and that could be dangerous. You know, uh, and so I try to maybe just, you know, finance. I, I try to take care of my finance a little more careful. Oh, okay. And, uh, and, and second, if I need money, you know, I need this, um, you know, credit. So I don't have to use credit card. I can use um, Huawei. I can use uh, Alipay. Like there is sub, 
uh, account like apps from Alipay. I can use all different sorts of like financial apps to get money. I think with my with my credit, I can get maybe around 120,000 within a few seconds. Yeah, so that is not a problem. So we don't need credit card right now. Yeah, well, I think the only time that people tend to use a lot of, uh, they tend to use credit card is because a lot of people, they figure out how to play that game. They will just get several credit cards and they play like money game. So I'm not that type of person. Mm. Mm. <coughs> Someone, Len asked, about, how do you pay for DTA? Are you going to use, try the DTA? Oh. Mm. Uh, let's, let's uh, you know, just stop under the tree for a second. Let me show you how I pay for DTA. So I DTA used to have this IC, IC card. Yeah, DTA subway. I used to have this IC card. I have to stick the IC card to that sensor on that machine so I can enter. And sometimes it's my ID, my IC card, which pocket that I put which. So it can be confusing. Right now, cell phone always. See? Uh, there's a reader on that subway machine, you know, as, as long as I, you know, focus, I aim that, of course, you know, in front of the reader, you know, I can pass it. It would just deduct money automatically from my bank card. So yeah, public transportation, cell phone, everything is on that little cell phone. That's why there's a movie. I mean, there was a movie filmed many years ago in China called Cell Phone. It shows you how powerful a cell phone can be and how destructive life can be if you have lost your cell phone. <laughs> Fred, um, there's also a question about the air quality in Beijing. I mean, it looks, yeah. it looks pretty clear, but we hear all these things about air pollution. What's the, what's the current situation? What are you talking about air pollution? We, I, well, that's I don't the even, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, you know, from the moment I started learning English, I've never learned the word air pollution. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Air pollution, yes. Well, especially, you know, spring in time now. I mean, spring, spring, springtime in Beijing. This is a very um, interesting time to travel in Beijing because I think temperature wise is moderate. You know, things look better. Uh, flower blooming. Now is a perfect blooming season for crab apple tree um, and bee tower, like kind of peach blossom. It's very beautiful in, in the gardens and parks, but sandstorm, and that can be something very annoying. So that happens very typically in springtime in Beijing. Oh, there's a saying, when there's a sandstorm, you don't have to go to Xi'an to see the terracotta warriors. You come to Beijing hmm. and <laughs> you got all covered up by sand by the end of the day, traveling outdoor. And in winter, because Beijing is the Beijing Gulf, like Beijing um, surrounded by mountains, very, very high mountains, like on both sides. So the pollution, it's difficult for us to, you know, just expel, just drive that pollution out. So in wintertime, when a lot of the Beijing citizens used to use, uh, you know, the stove, burning coal for heating up the house, there is a lot of pollution, like concentrated above, the ground of Beijing. So, but nowadays it's really different because the government is trying to install the electrical uh, electrical radiator for those Hutong traditional citizens uh, to minimize the uh, the source of pollution. And all the factories have been moved, relocation outside of the Six Rain Road, which is kind of distance away from the city. So, air quality has been improved, I think, dramatically. Oh, how lucky are we? Can I use a, yeah, yeah sure. Um, okay. So this is one of the bikes that I'm gonna unlock this bike. I'm gonna show you how I do this. All right, so first of all, there's a code. Yeah, I just open up my WeChat. And once again, the scan, it seems that I do a lot of scanning. Okay, it says recognizing bikes. And 
right now I need to unlock it and confirm. And it shows where exactly I am, you know, in relation with the city map. Because those bikes, they're actually distributed in different areas, in different districts. So you can only write within the blue highlighted area. Well, that is way too large for me. Yeah, I'm not going to write to a Sunyi district. It's like 10K away. Okay. See, once, once I, uh, even without payment, you know, it just unlocks. And before I sit on that bike, I need to do one thing. I lose that button and race the speed. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I have long legs. So, okay. I... <clears throat> Good. All right, let's go. Uh, some of you might have the question, hey, since you have already unlocked the bike, why don't you uh, ride your bike? Because we're crossing the street with a lot of traffic. And also, I got a bike, but our cameraman, he's a hardworking man. He's holding up the camera and walking in the rain. So I want to make sure that, okay, just a little bit, very slowly. So here's a question, Hel helmet's not required? Helmet's not required, not yet, it's not mandatory. It should be, May, because one of my relatives died because of this. Oh, sorry. And, well, that, that happened many years ago. And while well, people are discussing about who should take the responsibility, you know, because I, 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 I've met a lot of North American guests and every time, according to the Wild China Safety Standard, before the biking activity starts, we need to make sure helmets are there. So I understand the importance of that because I work with foreigners, with Americans. And, you know, that's the first thing I have in mind. Mm. How do you want helmet? And the story could have been totally different. Mm -hmm. so yeah um, yeah okay are you okay to chat more questions how do you pay for a taxi can you use wechat pay or is uh their system an app like uber that you use and pay directly okay that's a very good question hey guys i'm sorry to tell you no more ubers in china uh there used <laughs> there used to be uber and i used to guide people I think of Stanford business school students. Well, thanks to Wow China, we went to the Uber headquarter office in Beijing. Very fancy, more like a fashion company, black and white. You know, people dress up real nice. And I think they advertise maybe a little bit different from what they do in the States. They advertise that if you want to get a chance to sit in the same car with celebrity, we're talking about movie star, we're talking about Yao Ming, our basketball star. You get Uber because Uber is a very highly recommended, you know, like fancy, customized uh, way of transportation tailor made just for you. And that didn't work. We have 25 million Beijing citizens, and 90% of those are, you know, just like me. We don't want to be fancy. We want things to be practical and inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So by the time that Uber covered 100 cities in China, DD has already reached to 400. Um, there are no match, you know, in this competition against DD. So right now, if I need to get a DD, I can, all I have to do, guess what? Using my cell phone. That's the same thing. Yeah. Um, but um, I have to tell you, I, I think recently there is a big battle. There's a big debate online that some people think that DD is great. Um, well, including Uber. And some others say that they were giving like crazy benefits to drivers who are willing to drive for DD for this new platform. But right now they are kind of, uh, you know, ripping off, ripping people off. They're depriving a lot of profits from the drivers and mm -hmm. they're collecting a lot of money from people. They don't necessarily create anything. 
they're just like a me they're just a media you know that links the customer with the services mm. hey a couple more questions okay uh, but yeah. if you take taxi you can still be pay with cash right so everything you're doing yes. with your cell phone cash still works cash still works cash still works except the spike yeah. you, you uh, except for the bike the spike with cash yeah well um what if i put my cash here and say thank you for <laughs> letting me use that bike no i think uh maybe the janitor will collect the cash or, you know and take it away i right. cannot use my cash for that bike and um is this cell phone system you're talking about available in english yeah 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 it's all uh, I, i i think i think i haven't verified this on every single platform but i think most of it are actually bilingual you can use both chinese and english it shouldn't be a problem mm -hmm. mm. fred here's another great question where did you learn yeah. your effortless english <laughs> oh effortless <laughs> yes, uh, we're thank very, you for the we're very impressed with your uh someone's very impressed with your north american gestures idiomatic oh. expressions and even your humor <laughs> oh thank you thank you uh i'm a Well, China stand up comedian? No, I'm not. I'm just a tour guy. <laughs> uh, I started learning my English at the age of 12. So I was in an English experimental class. My grandmother used to be a professor, English professor in Tsinghua University. I guess I got some of that from her, maybe. Um, yeah, I always, I always love the languages, you know, English language. I think it's beautiful. And I used to translate for some of the meetings uh, from time to time. Yeah, um, I guess that answers the question. I was an English major student. And uh, well, if, if you guys want to hear that, I mean, I can speak with the Chinese accent. Like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll follow me, I will show you more about uh, Beijing. How, how does that uh, sound to you? <laughs> That's very bad. <laughs> and greetings from Paul Tischler, my uh, dear friends from uh, DC. And question there is: Are you still a Boston Celtics fan? God, how? Paul, how do you me. know that? <laughs> right. With uh, we we used to travel together, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you had it yeah, in yeah. I am a big Boston. Yeah, I'm a big Boston uh, Boston Celtics fan. I um, uh, I'm I'm kind of old school. I like Larry Bird, you know, and you know I I like those um you know youngsters who love. I mean, nothing wrong with LeBron James and Stephen Curry, and some of the people that like high flyers and you know like super. Flashy dunks. Well, I think you know uh, Larry Bird is great. I like those people that can just get down there and score, and do the dirty work. Uh, hey guys, we've we've come to actually a very interesting spot, very interesting uh location that we want to show you something. But before that, can we just slow down, please? So I mind. Uh, hey, us. Uh, let's uh let's take a take a take a. Look at this man in front of us. This is our delivery guy. That's the guy. I mean, those guys are people that are making things happen. Because with their motor scooters and that little box on the back side uh, on the back side of it, they are delivering like millions of cargoes and you know files, you know documents, uh, daily necessity or little gadgets yourself, anything you want to send to your to your friend on the other side of the city. They will they will send it like within one hour or or so one 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 hour and thirty minutes and you know something like that. So this is what we call shansung. I, I'm not sure how to translate shansung in English. It's like sending something with light light lightning speed or thunder speed. You flash know. delivery. Flash delivery. There you go. Flash well, delivery. In the U.S., there is a food delivery service called DoorDash. Oh, DoorDash. Hey, I love that. <laughs> Here we don't do DoorDash. We don't door walk. <laughs> Sometimes you turn you turn to mommy once the food is delivered to your door. <laughs> you starve to death. Now there, uh, there's a 
Brooke's little uh, boy, Zeke, is concerned about your commute. How long is your daily commute? It's taken a long time. <laughs> uh, you mean from home to work? Yeah. Uh, uh, not too bad. One hour. So I right, right now I live right by the subway station, line one. So bottom extension of line one. So I just need to uh, walk out of my place and get into the subway station. It takes me about 45 minutes to the interchange station and change the line 10. And 15 minutes later, and dear my friends, here we have already come to the Oriental Plaza where Washington office is located. Yeah, so not too bad. And plus, you know, uh, oh, who asked the question, if I may ask? Brooke, welcome. Oh, the length of, the, of your commute? It's uh, oh, her, her yeah. nine-year-old son, Zeke, asked that question. Zeke. Okay, nine-year-old son, Zeke. Hey, Zeke, I want to tell you that you don't have to live to my age, like 40 years old, to understand that the most important resource, um, the most important resource you have in your life is time. So that's why uh, we don't, we, we, we try not to waste much of our, our time like playing video games, not, not for people at my age. So that's, that's another reason I'd rather choose to take subway than to take, than to drive because when you're stuck in the traffic, you, you cannot do anything. I mean, maybe you can shave, maybe you can put a banana in your mouth and make it up for breakfast, but that's not safe. All right. So in the subway twin compartment, unless it's really crowded, like a can of sardine crowded, I can read, I can listen to music, I can check my email and stuff. So I can do a lot of things on my way, uh, on my way to work. Okay, Fred, and almost we're, we're out of, we're past time. Last oh. question here from our friend, Anthony. Uh, many yeah. people learn languages uh, from watching movies. Yes. Do you, what, which are your favorite American movies that you're watching? Band of Brothers, without hesitation. What is it? The Band, the band of Brothers. Uh, it's uh, Tom Hanks yep. on uh, World War II. Uh, it, it's about, I, I think, from uh, Normandy, from D-Day, the uh, 101 Air, Airborne Division, how they, how, they, how they fought in the European battlefield. I would saw it. Oh, I can't see it. I'm going to go to the next one. Now, this, this uh, guard is strict. He's very strict. Okay, hey guys, before it ends, uh, we just want to show you another thing. Because watch on office here, we have a very advanced facial recognition system. Okay, there he goes. See, I just, all I, all I had to do is to put my face in front of the camera and then pass. Okay, so I guess time is, we're, we're, we're out of time, right? You're not going to show us the office? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Let's let's go to the office. So, Fred, do, do you, yes. you so you don't have to wear masks indoors all the time? Like, what is the rule right now about where you need to and where you don't need to wear masks? Uh, Wendy, thank you for the reminder. I do oh, need sorry, to wear sorry. masks. Because <laughs> I uh, I'm I'm waiting in line for the elevator. Hey, hey guys, let me just uh tell you that once we get into the elevator. Uh, there won't be signal for about a few minutes, all right? We'll just, you know, get back to you once we get to the office. Okay. Um, while Fred is in the elevator, I'll verbally answer a couple of questions here. Does Airbnb have a presence in China? Yes. Um, also faced very strong Chinese competition uh, called Tujia. And there is one book I would highly recommend for anyone who's interested in sort of this aspect of how Chinese these mega apps uh, have developed to in include almost everything in people's life. WeChat does everything. You can borrow money, you can invest in bonds and the stocks, you can get your food, you can get your bike, you can get your taxi, you can book your train tickets, flight tickets. You can book your doctor's appointment, everything. And how did this happen in the past 10 to 15 years? Um, this book, we had a book talk with the author by Kai-Fu Lee called AI Superpower. I think 
we, we had the event a couple of weeks ago, but you can watch that um, on our YouTube channel. Um, that book will share a lot of, will answer a lot of the questions here on the technology front of China's development. Well, this was great. Um, Fred, are you there? If so, we can't see you. I think maybe we lost them in the elevator. <laughs> oh no, oh, my bad idea. <laughs> No, it was good when we tested it, it was fine. So <laughs> maybe maybe they lost service more this time. Let me message him quick. Okay, well, Wendy, do you have any, do we have well, any other I, questions? The, the thing that has surprised me most is how few bikes are actually being, you know, how, how few people are actually riding bikes on the streets because my first two days in Beijing ever, which again was 23 years ago, I rented a bike and rode all over the city. And I mean, it was wall to wall bikes. I mean, just like he, just like thousands and thousands. And, and if you didn't keep up with the people on either side of you, you'd be dead. You know, it was just a completely different scene back then. So I, I'm, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, I think people yeah. now, oh, there. Hi. Well, guys, let me just uh, turn up. Uh, I want to make sure that I can hear you, you guys too. Hi, I'm back online. Sorry for like a few minutes out. The reception is really bad inside of the elevator. But uh, hey, if time permits, um, you know, I'll be very thrilled to uh, um, talk to May or any, anybody who has questions, you know, about Wash China office. This is a beautiful office. I love this office. <laughs> um, Wendy was commenting on how surprised she is to see this Beijing without as many bikes as when she remembers, as, as in her memory. I mean, there are plenty of bike share, there are plenty of mm -hmm. empty bikes waiting there to be ridden. But, I, mm -hmm. but what I mean is, the, there were just so many more, I mean, thousands and thousands of thousands. I'm talking about 23 years ago of bikes, just like, I mean, and as soon as the traffic light went green, I mean, hundreds of bikes would just be, they'd all, you'd have to ride in unison. If you were slower or faster than the bikes next to you, you'd, you'd be run over. And it was quite nerve wracking. I mean, it was, you know, but I survived, I lived to tell the tale, but. You know where they are right now? Yeah, where are they? Most of the people that are in hospital. <laughs> But I mean, how are they all taking the sub? Are they taking the subway or are they? They're taking the subway. Okay. Um, because we, we were filming last week about, you know, how extensive and how convenient the subway system now in Beijing is. It's really, um, so when, when, when were you here in Beijing last time? Oh, well, I was there in 2007 last, but the first time I was there was 1998. Okay, so 1998, 2007. Ever since then, we have at least uh, 10 lines added to our subway system. So yes, answer is yes, people are taking subway now. Mm -hmm. How old is the subway? Uh, the first subway line uh, starts from 1970, 1969. Mm -hmm. And everybody wears, do they wear masks in the subway? Absolutely. You cannot enter subway station without mask. There are bending machine that sells masks. You need to get one of those. Otherwise the guard will be crazy. So is that basically the rule now in, in China? Is it, you know, if you're out, I mean, what if you're indoors, you wear a mask. If you're outdoors, it's okay not to, as long as you're how many feet away from other people? Yeah, yeah, um, you know, more or less, um, especially it depends on the local security and people are, some are, like super serious about this and some are like okay COVID that's like last year um yeah I do want to address one question there it says when will China be open for U.S. travelers what are you hearing uh in Beijing Fred uh we're hearing um as soon as we want it to be uh we I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know uh, how the virus situation now is ongoing in the States. Yeah. Um, okay. But I know that we're all looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Might be another half a year. I, I don't I, I don't know. I cannot say, you know, things about politics. Uncertain. Yeah. 
over here by talking to various people in the industry, et cetera, I think what we're hearing is most likely things will return to normal before the Winter Olympics, which is February 2022. So hopefully, hopefully later this year uh, in the fall or winter sometime, it will start gradually loosen up. That's, that's what we hear. And by then, we hope all of us could come back and uh, visit with um, Fred in person. And we'll have many other guys like Fred from uh, around the country waiting to welcome everyone. They're all better. <laughs> awesome. Um, OK, well, I know we've run over. Um, and Fred still wants to eat his breakfast. And I'm sure everyone in the US wants to have their dinner, uh, depending. I guess if you're on the East Coast, it's a bit late. But I want to thank everyone for joining us today, and May and Wendy for, for being here and asking questions and um, supporting. So this has been awesome. And we are planning to make this a series. So we will be doing another one of these next month, uh, location to be announced. May and I are going to discuss that, um, but we'll be going to a different corner of China and, and live streaming and we'll do our best to find a, a guide that rivals Fred. It's going to be hard. That's um, going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. But thank you everyone for, for joining May and Wendy. Fred, if you want to say goodbye, um, I'll open so that up. So much fun. Thank you so much. And thank you, Fred. You're awesome. Well, thanks okay. to our cameraman. He's awesome. Oh, show his face, please. Charles, hey, step in front of the camera. We just want to say thank you. Hey, come on, come on, come on, face up. Where's Charles? This is our beautiful cameraman. Uh, All right. He is the handsome Chinese man. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Thank you, Charles. Thank you so much, Fred. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank so you, May. Awesome. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Kendra. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Thank everyone. You.